Welcome to the Tesla Economist. Please hit the thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. In the past, we've established what various prices Tesla stock might be if certain conditions are met at various times in the future. Through this research, it became apparent that the company's success is mainly going to come down to their battery production and supply. So I thought it might be interesting to see if we could value Tesla rather than what they will achieve by certain years and instead just by their battery supply. I wanted to use this to value just Tesla's automotive side of the business and exclude all robotaxi potential. I'm going to create valuations of the automotive side solely on the amount of battery supply Tesla have to manufacture the cars. We will assume the factories have sufficient capacity, we'll also assume all cars are sold. In other words, at any of these stages, Tesla will actually have more battery supply than what we're using allocated into energy, and we're solely dealing with the amount of batteries Tesla have for autos. I was wondering the best way to achieve this. I'd considered breaking it up into factories and Tesla models, but for this scenario, I don't think that's necessary. Instead, we can just use average battery consumption and average price of each model. From there, I thought it was only necessary to just assign a percentage of each model sold as to how the batteries would be distributed between them. I'll first explain what I've done. We start with an amount of battery supply allocated to the auto side of the business. We then allocate an average amount of battery for each model and an average price. We then decide on what proportion of sales will be for each model. With that, we're then able to create a weighting for each model to calculate the average battery size sold of all Tesla autos. Once we know the average battery size, then we can divide that into the total amount of battery supply. Then that will give us the total number of auto sales. From there, we can go back to our percent sold and extract the number of units sold. And then we will know the total number of cars sold for each model. With that data, we can get an average number of sales per quarter, the total gigawatt hours consumed for each model, the percentage of battery consumption for each model, and the revenue from each model. We can then include more metrics to eventually work out what the stock price would be for just the Tesla auto side of the business. I thought it prudent to first get an idea of what level Tesla's auto battery supply would be from their non 4680 batteries by the end of this year, which is what I've shown in this example. I've started the model with roughly what Tesla is able to achieve from the factories that are currently in operation. When the Model S and X lines come back online, Elon said they'll open up an extra line, which should take production to over 30,000 units a quarter. Last year, Tesla produced around 15 to 20,000 Model S's and X's each quarter. So around 30,000 a quarter seems achievable now. And this is with the 18650 batteries, which are not used in other cars. In other words, there is no battery opportunity cost on making more Model S and X's. Tesla will only be using 4680s on the Plaid Plus model, which won't even be out this year. I'm giving X and S an average of 110 kilowatt hours per vehicle, as the Plaid model is presumed to be 120 kilowatt hours, and I believe it will be a big seller. And we have about 225,000 Model 3 and Model Y sales. A few more Model 3s because the Shanghai Model 3 factory has a higher capacity than the Model Y factory. These are using 2170 batteries from Panasonic and LG, along with LFP batteries from CATL. This works out at 900,000 annual rate. Although the factories have a total capacity of 950,000, so it's possible this is slightly on the conservative side. That comes in at a total of 75 gigawatt hours of auto battery supply. In other words, by the end of the year, Tesla should have at least 75 gigawatt hours from their suppliers for LFP 2170 and 18650 batteries. Now all the new factories that come online will be using 4680 batteries. So none of this previous battery supply can be used for these new factories. Tesla tell us that next year, they alone will be able to manufacture 100 gigawatt hours now, this could include around 20 gigawatt hours from Tesla's Cato Road facility, meaning perhaps another 80 gigawatt hours from Texas and Berlin. But Panasonic have supposedly already started a 4680 line at Giga Nevada this month. If that line is the same production rate as Cato Road, then that'd be an additional 10 gigawatt hours. This line might be what is initially used for the semi-truck and Cybertruck. So I would imagine that it'd be much larger than 10 gigawatt hours eventually, considering the size of the Nevada facility they could surely add additional lines if necessary, but likely want to start with just one line and refine it first before adding more. It sounds like LG will also be supplying Tesla with 4680 batteries, but it doesn't sound like this will happen until later. They're building a new purpose-built facility in either the US or Europe for the 4680 production. There doesn't seem to be any information on their existing facilities being used to add 4680 cells. 
and Panasonic may even start adding their own production line in Japan as well for 4680s. If Tesla can supply 100 gigawatt hours themselves next year, and their suppliers are already supplying about 75 gigawatt hours of the old form batteries, and if Panasonic could ramp up to even 50 gigawatt hours of 4680 batteries, then that's a total of 225 gigawatt hours of batteries for cars next year. Some of these batteries may be required for energy. Remember the 75 gigawatt hours we calculated from suppliers did not include energy. So perhaps Tesla will want to use some of this extra production for energy. I can't imagine it likely being that much though, but let's say that 25 gigawatt hours are used for battery storage. Now, after doing my 2025 price target models, as I say, it became apparent that this company is all about battery supply and production, hence why I've created this new battery model. So we can now take the estimated 2022 200 gigawatt hour battery supply for autos and plug it into this model. As of next year, there'll be a lot more models of car available. We need to assign a percentage to each model as to what we think that percentage will be of overall sales. I've tried to estimate the proportion of each models that will be sold by allocating a percentage of sales to them. I've made the Model Y about half of the sales due to the fact there'll be such a large Model Y factory in Berlin. I also reduced the average battery size of the Model Y as I believe that the 4680s will not require as big a battery due to the weight savings because of cell to vehicle integration. Same for the Model 3 from Texas. I've also introduced the Model 2, but only as 5% of sales as it may be ready sometime late next year. These numbers are a little rough. If you don't like them, then feel free to adjust them accordingly, but I feel it's close enough to give us the intel that we're looking for. When we plug in 200 gigawatt hours into this model, with the models of these proportions, selling price and battery sizes, then we get 2.8 million total car sales. Okay, something's obviously gone wrong here because most people are estimating about half that many sales for 2021, more around one and a half million. So where have we gone wrong? Well, a very quick check we can perform is by calculating the average battery size into the total battery supply and see what quantity we arrive at. We had 200 gigawatt hours of supply and the average battery size of auto coming off the line, we estimated to be about 72 kilowatt hours, except that comes in at 2.8 million too. This does seem high, but I can't seem to see any mistakes and I'm done making mistakes. I have a responsibility to get everything right. I also think Tesla will have the capacity for this too. If we think Texas and Berlin alone could do nearly 2 million between them next year, not to mention the Model 2 factory. Maybe it is a possibility that Tesla actually are able to triple their capacity. Remember, Texas and Berlin are juggernauts. This model doesn't actually stop there. It gives us much more data. It tells us there is nearly $150 billion of revenue. And if we set margins at 30%, we're at $44 billion gross profit. This doesn't include FSD either, so perhaps we should add that in too. We're going to maintain today's price at $10,000, factor in 15% of orders are purchased with FSD, and 60% of FSD is deferred revenue, which is the revenue that Tesla cannot take from the FSD sales, due to FSD not yet being feature complete. Although it is possible Tesla have reached level five autonomy sometime next year too. That's an additional $1.7 billion of gross profit. If we increase Tesla's expenses by double what they are from today's equivalent, this is basically R&D and sales general admin, then we have OPEX of $12 billion, giving us EBITDA of $34 billion. And with a tax rate of 21%, the net profit of $27 billion. Although it's likely tax rates could have risen by then. And with a PE ratio of 75, then that comes to a market cap of $2 trillion and a stock price just above 2,100. I think a PE of 75 is fair at 200 gigawatt hours of batteries, given that there is nearly 10 times as many batteries earmarked for their cars later this decade. Now, don't get too upset if you think this number is too low for next year's price target. Don't forget, this doesn't include any of Tesla's energy business, nor the robo-taxi potential. But currently, selling EVs is Tesla's core business, so it's likely this will be the majority of the stock value. Still, I'm happy if Tesla hits over 2000 next year, assuming they can reach that level of battery supply. But what if when Texas is ramped up, it's producing 2 million vehicles a year, and Berlin 1 million vehicles? Then that's closer to 4 million vehicles in total. And what if Panasonic are able to scale up more than 50 gigawatt hours a year? If they're starting right now, considering Tesla are aiming for 100 gigawatt hours, coming mainly from factories that aren't even built yet. 
Why is everyone else too scared to do these numbers? Is it too unbelievable? Do you look too crazy mentioning them? It doesn't sound impossible though, does it? Either way, bound to be worth holding onto your shares to find out. I've included a link to download this model for yourself. Feel free to play around with the numbers and include in the comments any interesting findings you get. Thanks for listening. Please hit the thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe.